Good evening, folks. We're going to do two important things here. We're going over the geoelectric hazard mapping, and we'll be going over the extremified solar storm impacts and why they are happening. We'll begin with the geoelectric hazard maps. I did know it would be pleasing this morning to show the new map with Canada finally included, but I did not anticipate the level and breadth of interest in the map and the impacts it is showing. So let's explain it simply. These are where the induced electric current from a solar storm is strongest, but what exactly determines that? It is actually a nearly equal combination of three things, magnetic latitude, ground magnetism, and population or electric grid density. All of these matter. Where the latitude is controlled by the auroral oval source of the induction, the ground magnetism determines how easily or with how much impedance the induced current flows, and the population and grid density acts the same way, providing the easiest of all pathways for that current, even though it is occupying a smaller area. The geomagnetic latitude is critical because the induction comes from the auroral oval, the northern and southern lights. Even during powerful solar storms when the oval reaches lower latitudes, it is still trying to induce the most at higher latitudes. There are two bands near the tropics, however, and these are called the equatorial ionization anomalies. These take Van Allen belt electrons and can produce a similar effect, so in really significant space weather, the latitude can become slightly less important. The ground magnetism is a hugely underrated aspect of this process. Nearly the entire world has been mapped at both large scales and small scales. This is one of the reasons New Zealand, for example, is considered at such high risk. It has a prominent magnetic anomaly running north-south, which also happens to be right where their major grid lines are too. In a small solar event, being in the wrong place in terms of ground magnetism can mean you can take a stronger current than expected. Similarly, in major solar storms, being in the right place can mean your technology is less impacted. But over the last hundred years, the grid density and population of the world has become another major issue. While spatially smaller and localized, the technological connections and infrastructure is by far the most vulnerable molecule by molecule, more so than your latitude or the ground beneath your feet, such that even the smaller scale of the grids by comparison make them an equal player among the larger ground and geomagnetic vulnerability factors. What makes this slightly more difficult is the fact that the solar storms don't exactly follow a pattern. Sometimes they're hitting the positive anomalies harder, sometimes the negative anomalies, sometimes where there is a strong gradient between them. But the three factors combined determine overall how much solar storm current is flowing at ground level. The scale below on this map tells us how much current is flowing and no, nothing on this map is anywhere near the scary range. To take an example, there's a stronger band here you see in the lighter colors in the eastern U.S. It doesn't extend up into Canada because the grid density drops phenomenally at the border. The impacts are stronger here because of the population and grid density and a strong Appalachian ground magnetic anomaly. The higher signature in the north versus the south is due to the geomagnetic latitude impact. I do hope you can understand how all three are working to make that signature there. Now on to the solar storm impacts on a larger scale. As we saw this morning, we have once again had a stronger than expected impact from very minor space weather. We made a video about this and the dozens of times it's happened over the solar cycle. This is ultimately because Earth's defenses, the magnetic field, is weakening in the ongoing pole shift and geomagnetic excursion. This is also why we shattered the auroral record last year and did so without major space weather activity, which is kind of a double whammy. It's big news to break the auroral record, but to do so without a single KP9 event or major solar storm power is concerning further. It actually happened again four days after that video, as I'm sure many of you recall, but for now, let's go ahead and re-watch that video so that we can be properly reminded of how far we've traveled down this road of Earth vulnerability. Folks, it's not stopping. The auroral displays are completely out of control, and if we weren't several years into clown world, I'd be shocked the media isn't discussing it. We mentioned it this morning. The 2003 Halloween solar superstorm produced low-latitude aurora down to the southernmost states. This has happened before, but not often, and it takes major X-class solar flares, extreme speed CME plasma striking Earth, 
and top-level geomagnetic storms. I went ahead and looked up the times that aurora were seen in the southernmost states, and here is a brief list going back to the Carrington event of 1859. The top lines are ones that happened in the same solar cycle. They certainly seem to be getting more common as time goes on, even as light pollution makes them harder and harder to see. This fact alone is a signal that Earth's aurora are getting more extreme, and with the fact that solar activity is not breaking any records, it confronts normalcy bias and reminds us this is exactly what we are expecting as Earth's magnetic field weakens in the ongoing excursion and magnetic pole shift. From 2018 to 2020, we said over and over, we'll be needing to closely monitor the aurora in the upcoming solar cycle to see if the trend continues. It certainly has. Just this year, we've had several events. In September, a solar storm which was not major, which was not triggered by an extreme speed shockwave, and which had no X-class solar flare, caused the auroral activity to be visible from Arizona. The same thing happened in August, once again, no X-class flare, the solar wind was moderately strong at best, and the geomagnetic storm didn't even hit KP7, but aurora were visible in Arizona nonetheless. The storm in April was fairly strong, but still not at the top level disruption, still no mega CME or X-class flares, and yet the aurora were visible in Mexico and southern Texas. It happened in March as well. Again, from a solar event that was only moderately strong, but which produced a fairly strong geomagnetic storm, still not top level, yet aurora were visible from New Mexico, and a few reports even came in from Florida. Folks, there has never been any year where far southern aurora were seen as many times as we've just had. This is a record, and the year's not over yet. What's worse is that the geomagnetic storms have not hit the top level disruption, and the solar activity that triggered them was moderately strong at best. We've said it before, let's say it again. The Earth is becoming more and more vulnerable to solar activity. I would never deny the significance of the ongoing economic issues, potential for World War III, loss of freedom due to governments in the World Economic Forum pulling their Agenda 2030 nonsense, but folks, despite the evidence being right in our faces, the media is completely ignoring what is happening to the Earth. The magnetic pole shift and geomagnetic excursion are progressing, and in the coming years, we're going to lose all modern technology and the foundations of modern civilization. It doesn't get much worse than this, especially since other real global issues seem to be overshadowing it completely in the public forum. We've seen this evidence in the magnetic field itself, the polar motion, the ionosphere, and the atmosphere. Alas, now an auroral record has fallen. The sun isn't doing anything crazy, so it once again shows us another sign that Earth's geospheres are in big trouble, and us along with them. So again, we absolutely shattered the auroral record last year. Not a good sign. It happened on the heels of minor to moderate space weather only, and that's worse. The magnetic field weakening is leaving us more and more vulnerable, and that is only expected to continue and get worse. Everything from watching the sun to monitoring Earth impacts with tools like the geoelectric hazard maps is critical from this point forward. This larger topic is easily explained in our latest book. Our previous books were complex university textbook level, not this one. You can get it now. We have added some copies to the store here at the link below before Observer Ranch opens officially. You can read it in less than two hours and know everything there is to know about the ongoing magnetic pole shift on this planet and why it is about to bring forth the next age of Earth. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.